If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon, and so many more places. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. And best of all, it's totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello again and welcome to another episode of Real Talk with RJ. If this is your first time listening, please don't forget to like and subscribe and follow so you know exactly when we release brand new episodes. Today, we're going to be talking about another self-analysis question, which is, are you achieving or living the life that you truly want to live? Now, let's dig a little bit deeper into that question. You walk around, you go to shopping centers, you go to different places of business, different corporations, different warehouses, different jobs. Not necessarily your jobs, but you look in the eyes of other people and you ask them how they're doing. And very often you see, which is sadly a common thing, but you see people out there miserable with the life they're living or miserable with the company that they're, they're working for. I, I like to ask people all the time, like, how you doing? And, you know, it's it's not an uncommon question. We ask people all the time, hey, how you doing? But when I ask a lot of people how they're doing while they're at work, they just like, oh, I'm doing all right, you know, hanging in there. Like, it's rare that I see people say, oh, man, life is great. So if that's a common thing, Who's to blame for that situation? I'm not saying one job is better than another job because everybody has a different calling for their life and everybody has different paths that they're trying to take. Now, are you happy with the way you make money? If you're not, why is that? Are you mad because you you can't stand the company? Are you mad that you're not living to your potential so you are settling and every day you go to work, you feel like, It's a blatant reminder that you're settling for a life to survive rather than achieve the life that you have always wanted to live. Why is it that you're miserable if you are miserable at your job? Maybe you made a decision in your past and it's affected your future. Maybe you never took a certain class that you regret not taking. Is there time to still take it? Oh, no, no, I have kids or I have you know, a family or I I work too many hours. I can't take that class. You know what? I was working so much and I'm not going to try to sit there and and compare myself to anybody else. This is just my testimonial. I was working so much. When I get done working my normal job, I would go with my friend. I, I would go do construction with him as well after I get off work for my normal job. And then on the weekends, often I'll be doing things to other people, helping them out, working and sometimes working with my friend and other times just taking care of of, uh, projects that other people need help to do. So more often than not, I'm busy doing something. And for a while I was getting out of shape and I was really getting frustrated with myself because and I I kept making excuses, but I didn't realize I was making excuses. I was just looking at all the things stopping me from working out. And it's easy to see all these hindrances and all these walls that are building up, keeping you from doing something that you believe you want to do. When I told one of my coworkers this situation about like, man, I, I really want to work out, but I'm waiting for, you know, to get done with the construction project with my friend so I can have, you know, I can actually have more time to work out. He said, man, let me just tell you something. Let me just be honest with you. If you really want to do something, you'll find the time to do it. And I couldn't argue with that because I have a saying myself, those who truly want to do something make time. Those who truly don't want to do something make excuses. You really could find a way to achieve the thing it is that you're trying to achieve. If you need classes, you can find the time and you can find the money legally to fund and, uh, and accomplish what it is you're trying to accomplish. If you have a significant other, a, you know, a boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse, whomever, and you just want to spend so much time with them, if that person really is for you and really loves you, they'll help you study because they want the best for you. They want the best out of you. 
So they'll help you study. They'll help you achieve your goals, your potential. That's what they want. If they're hindering you from, from achieving your potential, maybe they're not right for you. You know, you should never settle for safe. You should achieve your greatest potential by stepping outside the box, thinking outside the box, and being willing to take a, a walk on the wild side of, of something that's unfamiliar to you. You know, and sometimes you don't learn everything in class. Sometimes, you know, contrary to popular belief, taking classes is not really what gets you prepared for that lifestyle. Like you look at all these different nurses out there, all these different nurses in hospitals, they go to these schools, they go to these, or they go to these colleges and become nurses and stuff like that. But when they actually get to the hospital or the clinic or wherever it is they're going to be working, they realize that they learn entry level stuff. They learn the stuff to get them into the door. Their experience of actually hands on working with patients and work in, in, uh, trying to find the issues and diagnosis and treatment and and maintaining observance of the monitors in there, heart rates, EKGs, etc. All that stuff comes with actually doing it in the field, doing it in a hospital, doing it through the experience. And that experience is often taught by people who have way more experience than they do. Police officers who go to the academy and learn how to be cops and learn a little bit of the law they don't learn everything there. They learn the basics to get them started in the fleet or in the uh, and patrol. And then once they get out out there and they're actually pulling people over for real, they have a training officer, a senior training officer who shows them the ropes and teaches them how to do it the right way. So colleges, yeah, they're good to get you started. But if you really want to learn something, you need to do it alongside the person who does it for a living or somebody who has way more experience doing that thing. The, the point is, is that if you truly want to achieve a goal or you truly want to achieve your potential, you got to stop seeing the thing stopping you from that and look harder for the opportunities to help you still achieve that. If you are miserable and working in a supermarket, if this is you, just because you work in a supermarket doesn't mean you're miserable. It doesn't mean that's a bad job because that is a very good job if you really enjoy it. It pays the bills, it keeps you out of jail, it helps keep a roof over your head if you're doing it right. But if you're in a place that you can't stand, a place you hate, a place that makes you feel miserable, you can't stand the boss, you can't stand this, you can't stand that. And a, a sidebar from that is if the reason you can't stand it is because they're not giving you so uh, special treatment or they're not letting you get away with whatever you want to get away or they're requiring that you work, then, you know, go smack yourself and run away somewhere else because this isn't this show is not for you. I'm talking about people who are working just as hard as everybody else, if not harder, and you can't stand your life. You hate the fact that you're working in this place. You're mad at yourself. You're mad at the situation. You hate the company. Well, if you really don't like that company, find somewhere else. Look for someone that's better. I have. I submitted resumes. I went on all these online pages, pages and I never get any callbacks. That, that is an excuse. Just because you get no 100 times doesn't mean you're never going to get a yes. Sometimes you got to wait for that 101st time to get that yes. One other thing that is very underdone that a lot of people don't do is when you submit a resume or an application for a job people just leave it at that and say well when they call me they i'll know if they want to work with me or not no they're busy they just see a piece of paper on the on their desk or like they may have submitted this offer this uh, uh email listing saying hey we're looking for people and then people submit all their emails to that or, or their resumes to that email and they're just too busy to actually get around to looking at the resume. They're just too busy. So they just let them sit there and then they pile up. And guess what? If 150 people apply for that job, your email is going to be on the very bottom of that, most likely. Because the newest emails are the ones at top. And it just depends on when they get to it. If they get to it, then they'll be like, okay, I'm not going to go do all hundred of these emails. I'm just going to kind of look over and skim over like the top 10, if that. And I'll pick the one that I like the most as I skim over the resume. And then they'll talk to a couple of them and they'll make a decision with that. The rest of the other 40 people that submitted emails or 140 people that submitted emails, 
never get a call back because the boss just didn't have an opportunity to get around to that. Now, here's a here's a hack on getting around that. This is how a lot of people get jobs. You submit your resume and about two days later, you uh, first, whenever you submit a resume to any company, because I know a lot of people out there, they submit a resume to a lot of different companies and then they don't remember who they submitted to, but they don't remember what jobs they applied for. They just kind of had an idea that, oh, this looks good. They submit, apply and leave it at that. Submit your resume, write down the company and the information for that company uh, to which you submitted. And then a couple of days after that, like two to three days after you submit your resume, you call the company and request to speak to the hiring manager. Once you speak with the hiring manager, you introduce yourself and you confirm, say, hi, my name is so-and-so. I just wanted to, um, I know you're busy, so I'm not gonna waste any of your time. I just wanted to see if you happen to have uh, received my uh, my resume. I sent it in two days ago. Then the, the hiring manager is gonna be calling or uh, taking that phone call most likely from his or her office where they can actually sit down and look for your resume. Give them an opportunity to talk with you. Give them, give the, uh, the, the hiring manager an opportunity to see that you're not just a piece of paper, but you are an actual person. Because when they first talk with you, they're going to they're going to be communicating with the candidate. What you want to do is you want them to see you as a person. That doesn't mean start gossiping about, you know, the, 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 the person that screwed you over at the nail salon or or anything. Don't gossip. Just be yourself. And, you know, if a person likes you, they're going to get you. And if for some reason nobody likes you. That may be okay if everybody else is wrong, but it's it's also likely that not everybody else is wrong. Maybe there's something wrong with you and you should get some counseling or work on yourself to become the best version of yourself so that you can actually get a good job and be happy working with the people around you. Because if everybody hates you or doesn't like you at a job, you're probably not going to last it very long. At some point, they're going to let you fall and crash. No one's going to want to help you. And then you're going to be without a job again. So work on yourself become the best version of yourself and then be yourself and then submit that resume then call a couple of days after that request to speak to the hiring manager talk with that person a little bit say hey yeah i just want you know and then that will give them an opportunity to actually look over your resume and focus on that situation and then say if they're saying well you know i i can't really get to it right now then you can actually kind of ask like is there an opportunity for me to come in so maybe you and i can have a sit down no you're busy right now i, I you know i i and acknowledge that their time is valuable make sure they know they don't feel that you're uh, that you're just throwing away their time and taking advantage of their time but make it feel make it feel like you value their time so just talk to them and say hey you know i know you're busy and i don't want to waste your time or anything like that i just want to see if there's any opportunity we can set up in a, a face-to-face appointment so that maybe we could talk about my resume and you can see if I'm a good fit for uh, working with you. And then that will give them a second and say, you know what, let me see. Um, they'll probably say, hey, um, let me give you a call back. Or can you call back in like an hour right now? Or, you know, something like that. Or just like, okay, how about this? When is a good time for you? Or can you come in tomorrow at this time? A lot of times that's what happens. They'll ask you to come in the following day, you know, because that's, what's going on and if they're really that busy a lot of times they really need help at the store or at the place and then you go in there and when you walk into that place and when you walk into the office to go get interviewed this is a little trick i like to do if you walk into an office for an interview you look left to right in that person's office and you try to pay you try to find something that um that you know about and then try to have a have a story lined up about that item like for example if you know how to fish and you see this person holding a really big fish in a picture on his or her mantle then when you walk into their office remember that fish keep it to yourself but just remember that fish and then continue to answer questions uh they ask you what are your weaknesses or what weaknesses do you have or they'll say you know what is your biggest what do you think is your biggest weakness say you know do things that are positive reinforcement say well you know my biggest weakness is that i'm not perfect and they're like, what do you mean by that? It's like, you know, it's just, no matter how hard I try, I'm never gonna be perfect. So I, all I can do is just my best. You know, it's, it's too, it's, it falls short of perfection, but I always give, I give my best because it's all I can give. It's the best I can do. And they're like, okay, um, do you have any other weaknesses? And then you're like, you know what? I don't have any weaknesses that would ever uh, uh, con- conflict with my job. I'm like, okay. Um, 
then they ask you like do you have any questions which no more uh, more often than not they ask that question so do you have any questions so yeah i noticed that uh that that big fish in the uh and the picture behind you on your on your on your little stand then he'll look back or she'll look back and they'll smile because that picture had you know it was obviously an important event or something special to them which is why they put it up there on the mantle and just they'll say oh yeah you know that was my brother's birthday or you know it was a little guy's trip or you know that was my my husband's uh um fishing trip or something like that whatever the case may be they'll share that little story with you briefly and then you could say oh that's cool you know i went out there and i fished in this ocean and i didn't catch anything you know it's hard man and then guess what you now have just created an emotional connection with this person because you're talking about something that person likes now you're opening the door to them seeing you as a person rather than a candidate yes candidates are people if you want to go tit for tat and nitpick everything but i'm trying to use simple uh, descriptors so that you can understand this the point the point is this person is now going to see you as a person and they're go- they're no longer trying to look at you as a candidate but as a person they're going to remember how you made them feel ask them so why did you join this company what made you want to work here and how how do you like working here ask those questions those questions mean something to them. They're like, oh, well, you know, I feel this way and this way. And that, that could spark a nice little conversation. Don't ramble, but actually ask them what they think about the company. And keep in mind, don't be desperate for a job. I know everyone needs to pay their bills and stuff like that. But seriously, if the manager hates working there, what makes you think you're going to work there or that you're going to enjoy working there? If everybody at that company looks miserable, what makes you think you're going to be happy working there? You know, pay attention to the atmosphere of people. Sometimes it's good to just kind of walk up when you when you walk into an interview or walk in, you're getting ready for an interview. Pull one of the workers aside and ask them, say, hey, um, what do you think about working here? How do you like it? See their face. Like, do you feel it's fair? Because remember, an interview is a two-way thing. A lot of people think that interview is only the boss interviewing you, but it's a two-way thing. You're also interviewing them to see if you're a good fit for the company. And if you're not, don't settle. That doesn't mean think you're the go into a company thinking that you're going to be the best at all. Just because you graduated top of your class in an academy does not mean that you're going to be the best officer in the police department or the best lawyer in a new firm. That doesn't mean that you still are green. You still have no idea what it's like in the real world. Just because your mom or your dad is uh is a world-renowned heart surgeon doesn't mean that you already have you can go in there and and hit the ground running with the experience to cut uh cut open hearts you still have to have your own experience and it's your personal experience that prepares you for that future now i go back to the original point are you living the future that you want or the life that you want i went on a tangent there talking about the interview process to just kind of get that out of the way those are tricks you have to realize that you do have options if you really want to move somewhere else and you really want to have a different lifestyle figure out what it is you, and this this requires sitting down you know we hear a lot of talk about dream boards and you know putting writing down your goals that's important you actually do need to take time to sit down and write your goals write down first where are you now because without a starting point you're never going to go anywhere. That's like going out to sea and saying, okay, we're just going to see where we go. No, because you can end up dead that way. You can go to the wrong place where all the tropical storms are at, or you'll just sink. You can end up somewhere completely different than you had intended. The best thing to do is when you get ready to go on a journey, you need to realize where you are first so you can map out a course to that place. And then you need a heading, which is the direction you intend to go and follow. So, If you're not happy with your life, you're not happy with the choices that you have made, do something about it. If you're not happy with the choices that you've made, do something to fix that. Learn from them, move forward. If you're not happy with the spouse you have, do something and move forward. Why aren't you happy with the spouse? Are they selfish? Or is your your significant other selfish? Are they heartless? Are they unfaithful? Are you staying together with them just because you have children? That's a bad reason to stay with somebody just because you have children. Why would you stay with someone just because you have children? So the children won't suffer. Well, the children are going to suffer more watching their parents argue all the time, watching their parents fight all the time and thinking that this is okay, that this is a normal life. 
a healthy relationship doesn't have like vulgar violence you know where you guys are at each other's throats arguing and and pushing each other and putting your hands on each other that's not a healthy relationship so your kids should not grow up watching their parents just at each other's throat at all time maybe you guys are going through med- uh, medical um problems like maybe uh maybe someone's going through menopause or someone's going through a midlife crisis or someone's just having a hard day at work and bringing it home Whatever the case may be, this requires sincere self-analysis. You have to really think about yourself, your conditions. Why are you responding this way? Is it just because it's just not working no matter what you do? Have you tried counseling or counseling and everything else? Have you tried everything you possibly could and still not working? Then make choices to rectify the situation. If you're not happy, then do things to correct that situation so that you can be happy. If you're at a company that you hate and can't stand, make choices to look elsewhere and get better employment you'd be surprised a lot of companies won't pay you well because they know they can get you for cheap but if you conduct yourself in a way you work as hard as you can very often in these companies that treat people badly they'll start seeing that man like this person's actually not easy to replace this person does a job of like five people so if I lose this person then i gotta hire five more people which is actually going to cost us a lot more money and it's going to take a lot longer to train them on top of that it's going to slow production down or slow uh, slow what we do down a lot further because this person does all of that so then you have leverage because you're no longer just a candidate you're no longer just an employee you are somebody that actually makes the wheels in the business turn fast and effective so that's at a that's the point when you walk in and you sit there and you respectfully speak to the people who have the power to give you promotion and say hey um i was just curious if uh um if there would be a possibility you know may may i possibly uh receive a raise you know i've been working here for x amount of time and i work really hard i put up numbers i, I you, and my numbers are undeniable you know you're always talking about how good of a job i'm doing i just wanted to a respectfully request a raise you know if they say no we can't give you a raise and this and that and this and that i mean it's one thing if the if production is slowed down severely like there's just not a lot of sales going on and you're asking at that time come on it's kind of obvious that they're not going to have the money to give you a raise because they don't have that much money coming in now if they're out there driving these nice luxury cars and they're out there spending money and buying all this nice pointless stuff and all these toys yeah it's clear they have money it's clear they're able to uh to buy more things and to increase uh, the quality of life for their employees they're just not doing so so if that's the situation in which you find yourself then say you know what i've had it if you don't want to invest in me i'm not going to invest any further than you i've given you my best i've given you x amount of years or months or whatever and I mean, if you're about to quit a job because of, after working there for a few months then yeah you, there, i wouldn't invest in you either most likely i mean there's small there's always circumstances that will change the answer but seriously if you're you work a couple of months with somebody and you're already leaving because you think you deserve a raise you haven't put in your time if you got years in a company and you're asking for a raise and you're putting up top numbers and you're doing something that you're doing way above and beyond what other people are doing then yeah you you have leverage there you can say i'm not going to continue to invest in a company that won't invest in me I mean, I, I believe I deserve more. I believe I'm worth more. My work ethic provides so much more. I do what five people do. I do that by myself. I should be getting and pay, paid so much more, at least half of a raise, you know, a, a, a pay and a half of what I, I'm getting now. I would essentially save you guys, you know, $80,000 a year, you know, by not having to hire more people to do what I do by myself. You just got to come with facts. You got to come with numbers. And you got to come ready and confident, showing that you believe confidently that you deserve this. And just make sure you don't, you're not overdoing it. Don't say, oh, I deserve to make $187,000 a year. And they're like, uh, all you do is put the books back on the shelf. That's all you do. You literally don't do anything but put books back on the shelf. Why would I pay you that much? Well, I went to college, okay. Well, we didn't tell you we required a college degree for this. This is putting books back on the shelf. You don't have to file them. You don't have to 
type on the computer. You don't have to do anything else but get the books from the top or the front desk and put them on the shelf. That's all you do. I'm paying you minimum wage because that's what this job requires. And that's it. That's all this job is worth. So just be realistic about your raise. Don't expect a, a, a ridiculous raise when you're not doing ridiculous work. I'm very blessed. I'm very grateful that the company for which I work, they pay very fair and they provide just so many opportunities for growth and improvement within this company because they invest in every employee here. They really are passionate about what it is they do. All the employees are passionate about what we create. And it's just, it, it's it's a blessing to work for this company. For obvious reasons, I'm not gonna talk about the company in specifics about uh, for which I work, but I'm just, I'm really grateful. And I know that there are many opportunities out there for other people who really would like, excuse me, other people out there who would enjoy um, working in other places, there are jobs, there are other jobs and other opportunities for you if you're willing to go look for them. And if you're willing to take that leap of faith and jump outside of your comfort zone to achieve something that you feel is better fit for you, there's opportunities there. You just got to be willing to take off that that shield of safety and be willing to say, you know what, I'm gonna go skydiving. Let's go. And just jump out that plane and see if that chute opens. Sometimes it, it Sometimes it's not. That's just the reality. Sometimes you're not going to get exactly what you want. But maybe there's something better right around the corner. And if you give up at that point, you're never going to see what's around the corner. All I'm saying is that if you're not happy with the life you're living, more often than not, the reason for that is because of choices you are making now. If you want a happier life, make it happen if you want a happier marriage make it happen stop living this illusion that you hear people say this all the time i hear people i hear men who have been married for so long tell me this and i quote you could when you're married you could either be happy or you can be right why can't you be both when you're right you're right when you're wrong you're wrong why is it so often that when men are married to women, they depict their spouse as a dictator of the household. That's not fair. You know, we, we see out there so often women are out there um, like it, that's OK. If a woman comes and she's in charge of the household. Yep, she's in charge. And everyone accepts that. But if the roles were reversed, if the man was in charge of the household, oh, he's a dictator. He's so, you know, controlling. He's so jealous. It's all it's a complete negative. If you were to do the exact same practices, oh, well, uh, the husband runs the household. He tells everyone what we're going to eat for dinner. He controls what we do. He tells everyone what's going to happen. He controls the decorations. You're like, dude, he's a dictator. He's controlling. It's bad. It's toxic. You need to leave him. That's what the the friends of all those women were going to say. But when women do the exact same thing in those situations, managers are like, hey, that's life. That's marriage. The fact is, it doesn't have to be. Because that's an illusion to say you can either be right or you can be happy. Because men who are married to women like that, who are always right, who are who will tell them what they have to do every second, like they're puppets. And now this is not I'm not referring to men who are equal partners, good husbands and etc. I'm talking about lazy, good for nothing men who won't do anything unless they're told. If those guys are married to women who are telling them to do something, everything, you're not happy. You're miserable because all you owe is a paycheck and all you all you are is a puppet. It's like you're a pet. You're in prison. So, of course, you're not going to be happy. Just the amount of drama you experience is going to be severely lessened because of the fact that you'd rather not argue or go back and forth about your opinion on the matter. I don't really like that couch. Well, she did. So we're buying it. Like, no, it doesn't have to be like that. Why can't you both agree on a couch? Why can't you both agree on a place you're going to go for vacation? Why can't you both say, oh, well, you know what? I really don't want to go to this place, but I know you want you've been wanting to go there for a long time. So how about this year we go there and next year we go somewhere I want to go? She goes, no, I think we should. No, then th- that's not going to happen. It doesn't work that way. You don't always get your way and I don't always get my way. This is a team. This is a relationship. 
both people are involved. Both opinions matter. So people need to just stop settling for he's always right or she's always right. That's not a happy life. That's an illusion. A happy life is one where you're heard, one where you're valued, one where you're investing in someone else and someone else is investing in you. That's a happy life. That's the goal. Don't forget you are worth being invested in. You are a great investment if you're honest with yourself. Thank you for spending time once again on Real Talk with RJ. Signing off.